Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem here. We are back in Foundry, of course, and we're in my testing world. We're going to look at a add-on today, an add-on module. Um, and this is to do with uh, us looking at shops, um, Monk's enhanced journal not quite functioning the way we want to at the moment. Um, obviously that will get fixed at some point. And we've looked at using the very basic journal kind of um, way of doing that, very kind of manual shop, which is perfectly plausible and acceptable. However, we did have a, cop, uh, a comment from uh, Zayentist. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, in that last video, we were looking at that simple shop solution, and they mentioned an add-on called Item Piles. Um, now, I've looked at Item Piles previously, not in a video, um, but just kind of glanced at it as, a, is this something useful? And Item Piles allows you to literally drag items and dump them onto the map, so characters can drop um, you know, they drop their longsword, they put it on, and it actually will put it as an icon on the playing area that somebody else can kind of come pick up. And I thought, oh, that sounds great, but I don't really see that that's particularly useful. It's not something um, I felt that would actually add anything to my games. What I wasn't aware of is the merchant side of it. So I'm in my, obviously, I'm in my module management. Uh, I'm just going to correct item piles. Uh, and that is automatically going to want me to do socket lib and lib wrapper as well. So we're going to save that. It's going to reload, of course, as it does when we change modules. Uh, and just to show you this, my active modules, this is all we've got active in here now. Okay, so that's it. So we're not confusing ourselves with anything else. So how actually does this work? So an item pile literally enables us to yeah put things on like an inventory that we dump on there. And it works um, using an actor. So uh, if I go to if I go to my items, this is the way that this is going to work. If I want to create a new pile of items, I can drag any item. I could drag it from the SRD. I don't have to drag it from my own items here and just jump that on there. It's straight away it's telling me oh I'm dropping rations how many do I want to drop and do I want to create a new pile yes I do it's now there it's on the map as an item or rather as an actor that represents those items if I double click this you can see that this is saying this pile um, has these rations in it and there's things I can do like open the sheet and you can see that this is a character sheet that has in its inventory one ration. So this is how item piles is choosing to handle this. You say, oh, let's add the items into the inventory of an actor and do it that way round. OK, fine. Yep, no problem with that. Um, we can show this pile to players and we can configure this pile to be what we want. Uh, so obviously, once I've created this, let me just go to uh, my actors. You can see up here in the top right, I've got this default item pile. All right, so I can copy that, edit it, etc., whatever I want to do. Uh, and because it's an actor, I can do things like configure ownership, and I can make sure that this item pile is observer so all the players can see it, um, and all of those things. So let's open that up again. Uh, whoops. Let's open up repeatedly, shall we? Um, either way works. So what I can do from here now is if I go to configure pile, there's a whole bunch of settings here that is about this actor that is a pile of stuff. What I'm particularly interested in right now is going to other settings. And you can see I can tell it what type of pile this is. And one of those is merchant. Now, just so you know, item piles is literally a pile of stuff that is sits on the map that people can rummage through. Container, and we might look at this in another and different separate video. Container is if I want to have something like a treasure chest with stuff in it, and they can rummage, they can take stuff out of that chest, put stuff in. So you could create a, a um, if you've got a, if your party has a wagon or saddlebags and they're constantly taking stuff out and putting it back in this might be a really nice way of doing it we're interested in merchant so you'll notice that it just gave us some extra options and it changed what we can do on here so first of all we can choose an image for our merchant uh who should we pick oh let's pick um elder runara our image for that 
Um, and there's some settings we can do here, things like infinite quantity. That means, you know, if they sell saddlebags, they sell as many saddlebags as you can afford to buy. Uh, I don't want to do that for this example one, but we could. Uh, do they want infinite amount of money so they can just buy back everything that the characters want to sell to them? What happens when they run out of goods? So when they're fully sold out, will it remove the item from the shop or will it leave it there with zero available? I'm going to leave it there. Um, okay, so how does, sorry, this configures how the quantity of items in the store is shown if, if at all. So yes, show the quantity. You can have it as no, hide the quantity, however you want to do this. I'm going to have it as show the quantity. Yes, you can see that they've got 12 spears. You can set this so they can only buy, not sell. Uh, hide new items, and you, you can see you can customize this quite a lot to your very specific um, shop. Each shop you can do differently, of course. I say shop. This is not. This is the way to think of this is they're going to be talking to this NPC who is going to sell them stuff rather than going into a building. So we prefer before we had a journal entry on the uh, just, just hidden under here now. Uh, on this building here which was the stone hill inn and they would click on that journal entry to interact with effectively the journal entry for the building this is going to be an actual person character actor that they're going to interact with instead um, and you can dot them around of course wherever they want to be so in this case i could choose to say well when we were on the active map um, of the town i could have the merchant icon character um, sitting above the inn so they can interact with it or they can't access that until they go into the inn we change scene into the inn then they can interact with that NPC so a couple of different things we could do there but I digress as always uh, so um, there's whole things we can do about logs now look at this we can modify and we looked at this with uh, with monks enhanced journal about the fact that we can have modified prices so standard 100% normal prices straight out the PHB or rather from the item whether that's from the SRD whatever we set the item up for it's going to be that normal price for the characters to buy uh, and selling they're going to get 50% of the value when they sell items to this person so again we can tweak this and say actually this shop in this town things are a little bit more expensive they're 110% of the normal price or it's a bit cheaper whatever it might be and it could be of course that for this particular merchant they've i don't know they've saved them from something or they've got a good reputation and you could say well actually they get a 10 percent discount for any interactions they have from this shop so you can modify this for the whole shop as the characters gain reputation or complete certain quests that's nice isn't it so those side quests that sometimes they like to skip, actually there can be other benefits you can build in nicely for that. Uh, we have configure item type price. So if we click on that, uh, we have the ability to say, well, hang on a minute, we can add in. And I've not played with this at all, but you can say for weapons, for example, might be cheaper or more expensive. Um, maybe um, tools are more expensive and things like that. Now in Fandelva, there are going to be certain things that are harder to get hold of than others because it's a growing town, it's being rebuilt um, and stuff like that. So you could absolutely use that to change those prices. Uh, I'm not going to, not for this, but you could. Uh, so that's item price modifiers. Um, configure actor price modifiers. What's this going to do for us? Here you can define the price and sell price modifiers for this merchant merchant relating to specific actors oh right <laughs> the built-in racism function <laughs> so, so <laughs> they, they're going to charge the half orc more than they're going to charge the elf or something like that um so you can actually do it and of course individual members of the party may have different reputations with different merchants um based on their actions and stuff so you can use that to do that we're not going to play with that right now let's get the basics sorted but that sounds like a really i like that idea that you could do that um uh, we can also do things like hide the token when the shop is closed okay so when it's closed they can't see the icon the actor whatever you want to call it 
um, and you can set opening time. So we can do those things. That's cool. That's nice, isn't it? Under these main settings, um, these obviously apply to, to whatever type of item pile you've got. Is it enabled? How close do you, those characters have to be in order to interact with this item pile? So for us, how close do they need their token need to be for them to interact with this merchant? Now, if you were interacting with an item pile such as a chest, you'd probably say, well, if your token's not next to the chest, you can't just reach in and grab the goodies. Yeah, totally fair. For things like, oh, well, we're in the tavern and we want to buy stuff from the merchant, you probably don't want to have the hassle of, oh, they've got to move their token next to the merchant so they can buy their stuff um, and do it that way. So you can just take that out and as long as they can see the token, they can interact with it. So within our in setting, that's how I would have that. Just so it stops them having to move their token to do that. We don't really care if they're right next to them or not for those, for buying ale, <laughs> for example. Okay. Uh, enable item inspect. That means when they click on the item, can they see the description and stuff? Yes, absolutely. I would say that. Look at this ability to insert a macro here. Um, are there, well, there are already some macros in here, which is quite interesting. Um, but I strongly suspect that any macros we chose, you notice a lot of these are MIDI ones and DAE. Um, so clearing passive effects and stuff like that that you can do. But that means you could, I suspect, just create your own macro and drop it in there. In fact, let's check that. We know if we drop a character onto the macro bar, that becomes a macro. Can we drop that macro into there? Uh, not like that we can't, but we can open macro okay so that's only going to out, out, yeah, okay so that's only going to open an existing macro um, but if we created one we should be able to somehow get that in there we're not going to play with macros but that's a thing it exists can I get rid of that now I've put it in there thank you I don't want to <laughs> explode things um, but yeah another option for us Okay, what happens to this item pile when all of the stuff is taken? So if you literally have a pile of goodies on the floor and everybody's taking stuff from it, once everybody's taken stuff, yeah, delete the pile, okay? Um, for a merchant, we wouldn't want it to do that. We're going to say, no, don't delete it. Don't delete the merchant just because he sold out of goods. Okay, so let's turn that off. And also, if you're using a chest, well, you'd want to leave the chest there so that they could put stuff back into it. Okay, so that's useful for that. Uh, can items stack? Yes, we don't want 12 different rations all listed separately. Stack them up into a stack of 12 rations. That would be good. Uh, we can do things like edit descriptions, uh, override currencies, and all of those good stuff. But let's stick with what we've got for now. Okay, so we updated an image, didn't we? When I double left click on here, this is the image that we chose for it. Um, but note that the token for the actor is the same okay so we need to go to appearance here and rather than that hock we can again change that if we want to to our individual so that is what our item pile now looks like that's the merchant they're going to interact with okay so because we used ration to create this first one this is what our merchant now looks like at the moment you can see we've got um, two options at the top left here. It's called default item pile. Of course, we can change that name, and we would, um, you know, to whatever the name of the merchant is or the place, the sh name of the shop, whichever. Um, we can edit descriptions here, and there's some settings we can do directly in here, such as they only buy, hide new items, those price modifiers. We can do that directly in here, which is quite nice. But this is the list of all the things they've got to sell. So one ration, uh, and that's one electron piece, okay? Because it's got pulled that price from this ration over here. Now this says five silver pieces. That says one electron piece. So I'm not quite sure um, what's happened there. But look, we can do some settings here. Uh, and I didn't realize there were settings here. So this is very, very new. But we can do things like, oh, what's the, so it's a, it's a consumable. Uh, is it hidden? No. Can it stack? Default to the setting we said, which we said yes, stack. 
we can flag it as not for sale, can't be sold to merchants. So we could say this item, nobody's going to want to buy rations back. We could do that. Um, we could set this to be infinite quantity, even if normally we've got no. Do we want to keep this when zero quantity? Again, this is just overriding the settings we've already done by the looks of it, if we wanted to do that. Uh, ooh, and there's a macro option here for specific things. So when they buy this item, it could play a particular sound or make a particular effect if we wanted to do that. I'm not going to. That's that's far more complicated than I want. I'm not making Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, base price. Okay, so this configures the normal price of this item. Um, that's interesting. It says one electron piece there, where the base price is five that it's pulled from the rations. Uh, you get one of them for that price. You could set it to be free. Disable normal costs. Purchase items. Okay, and then we've got vault settings. Ooh. Okay, we're not looking at vaults, so I'm going to ignore that. A little bit worried about that price. We're going to sort that. I'm not sure how yet, but we will. Let's go to Populate Items tab. Right, so on here is where we can start adding things in if we want to. So I can add more rations in here. Now notice that went from one to two. So I, the more I drag, because we've got it to auto stack, it's gonna just keep adding those. Alternatively, I can just click in here and say they've got 20 lots. Bosh, done. Nice. Now in our other, um, in our other game, we created simple um, accommodation and meals and things like that. We could just drag all of those in to create our shop. But I wanted to do this again in that clean testing world so we're not muddying the waters. But what I'm going to do here, oh, I just realized, hang on, sorry, just go back a bit. There is an item piles, custom items. What's that for? Oh, interesting. It's got casting stuff in there. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm going to ignore that because that's not what I came here for. <laughs> <It's> distracted. <laughs> but it's got macros in here for item piles as well. Um, and it's got merchant tables in here, which is interesting. We'll come back and have a look at tables in a bit because that might be a shortcut. Right, but if I go to the SRD, this is what I came here for. And I go to items. I can come straight in here and say battle axe. Drag it straight in. Uh, tool, uh, you're going to have a chest set. Um, are you going to have some armor? Yes, you have breastplate, uh, ammunition, arrows. Oh, we're not going to have one arrow. You're going to have 25 arrows available, not 125. <laughs> That's quite a lot of arrows. 25 arrows available. Uh, we can just build it like this. So whether we're dragging from our created items or from the SRD, we're just chucking them in here and that's lovely jubbly. Okay, so now if I go back to buy items, you can see it's broken these down into their sections and we've got our pricing in here. Um, our arrows, five copper pieces, 400 gold for breastplate, one gold for a chest set, 10 gold for a battle axe. Uh, still slightly confused by the price for these rations because that definitely says five silver pieces. So I'm not quite sure what is uh, what is going on with that. Um, a little bit worrying, isn't it? Oops, if we look at arrows, if we look at arrows, they are five copper pieces. Yeah, five copper pieces. If we look at breastplates, they are 400 gold pieces each, 400 gold. Why is it doing rations wrong? Can we, oh, by the way, we can, um, let's get rid of all of these. None. Can I actually delete this item? Just drag it out completely. Ooh. Can I go to settings to delete it? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just wondering if it's because I've used this item as the initial one. It's just not picking up the correct price. Because certainly this item over here, five silver pieces, it should be picking up that correct price. It's doing it for everything except this initial one. Which makes me wonder is should you potentially create it using something a bogus that actually isn't for sale? Item is hidden. You know, they can't actually purchase that. 
and then when you pull the other things in it will correctly do that I don't know now I have bless in here that I also don't know how to get rid of uh, on populate items you stupid boy of course go to populate items and remove them from there that <laughs> remember remember I'm an idiot so you don't have to be <laughs> okay right let's drag rations in freshly it still says one electrum that's really confusing that's going to bug me if I come over here so I'm going to get rid of that again let's populate items get rid of rations from there um, if I go to food and drag rations in from here okay because over here this is the original five silver one electrum it's got it's something specific setting for this it's got something very specific for this item that is not working to plan we always find some issue don't we settings uh, Uh, did I mm, hmm was there did I do something silly when I was doing no because consumables it's doing it correct for arrows and they're a consumable but not for rations okay might have to look at that may have to fiddle with that um, we know that we can potentially artificially inflate the prices for these um, and override although that does say five that's the normal price for this item and you get one for it add purchasing options if anybody knows what I've done there to create that, everything else seems to be working. It doesn't seem to like my rations, even though I've deleted them and dragged them back in. Uh, that would be really, really helpful. Okay, so we know we can populate and put stuff in. We can change these numbers. Um, you know, they've got 10 lots of rations available, etc. So we can do that easy peasy, even if we've got one price issue. At the top right here, note that there is an open... Uh, as an open button here so we can open and close this shop um, using that and apart from the settings we can hide each of these I've got something open somewhere thank you very much um, yeah so we can open and close the shop um, but we can also it's not hiding those things let me close this oh let me close this. Let me open that again. We can, yes. Something slightly squiffy is going on, isn't it? So battle axe. Won't let me hide battle axe. It's not updating. That's, that's what it is. So if I double click on this. Okay, it's now hidden the battle axe. If I click on that, it's not showing it on here. But if I close it, open it again, it has indeed. So there's some kind of visual glitch going on with this right now. I uh, don't know what it is. But um, yeah, I'm clicking on, so the shop is open. If I click on it, it should close the shop. It's not showing me that it's closed. But if I close this and come back in, it has indeed closed the shop. So it's not refreshing this sheet while I'm doing it. That's slightly odd um, and not something that I've encountered when I uh, first installed it. It was working. Hmm. Don't you love it? Okay. Well, that might need a restart of um, or Foundry just to sort that out. That might be an issue. I'll be back in two moments while I just go and sort that out. Alright, I came back again. So all I did was um, log out of Foundry, go back to the main menu, come back in again. I could have left the video running for that. Um, but actually, look, it's doing it now. So it's just a little Foundry glitch rather than a, an item piles problem. So sorry about that. It happens occasionally. Not very often, to be fair. It's very stable, but um, yeah, that was one of the occasions. Uh, so if you do encounter things like that, yeah, you just, can just go, boom, return to setup, log back in, and it kind of clears those little glitches. So what I was trying to say is, apart from the settings on the individual items, you can use this eye to hide that item from the shop at any time. And you'll notice I'm on buy items, not populate. I can do that. But also I can use this one to say, yeah, you can see they've got battle axes, but they won't sell it. 
Okay, so it could be they've got certain items that they won't sell to certain customers until something's happened. Um, you know, you can window shop, you, you can look, but you can't touch um, if that's what you want to do. So you can either hide it completely or just say, nope, not available to you. Um, and we can open and close that shop as well. Okay, so that's what our shop looks like and we can dump it wherever we like on there for us. Um, and we can open and close these items. Oh, look, it's done it again. Hmm. So maybe it is a little glitch with this. Yeah, it's uh, given us a little bit of jip with those buttons. Um, okay, let's not worry about it. This is part of this is setting it up. Uh, so as long as it works, once it's set up, not a drama. Okay, so what else do I want to look at? Across the top here, we've got a couple of different options. We can open the sheet. And again, what we can see, this default item pile, it's actually a character sheet. We can update um, the image here, not that we need to. Um, but we can also see everything in here. Now you don't need to open this character sheet because everything's done through um, through this window here, um, and the players certainly don't need to see the character sheet. But it's, that's what sits in background to drive this because it's an actor. Uh, Show to players is not going to work because there's no players active for uh, for us to demonstrate that and show that to, which is fine. Understand that. But we can also configure the pile from here. Of course, it's going to put the window behind it, which is just bringing up this lot of settings again. And so remember, we went through these um, and updated certain things. I'm just wondering, did I do something stupid with prices in here? Um, I know I kind of played with adding and then ooh, cancel that um, and stuff. And I just wonder if that's what was affecting it. OK, so uh, how do we actually get this to work? We need a character on here. Let's dump in. Uh, let's dump in Sorryman. We're always using Haley. Let's have Sorryman. So we're going to dump him into here for us, uh, and I want him to interact with this shop. So let's open up his character sheet. Let's see what he's already got. He's already got some stuff. Can he buy a chess set? It's one gold piece. He's got plenty of gold. Uh, how does that work? And this is what you're thinking. It's like, well, hang on a minute. How do I get that to work? That's not going to work while we're logged in as the DM. What we need to do is to log in as a player. So again, bear with me while I just do that. I didn't mean to log out of that. <laughs> Such an idiot. I didn't mean to go to return to menu. I meant to go to the invitation links and copy this link so that in my other window there, I can simply uh, join the game. So I'm doing that in the other window uh, and I'm going to join as player one and bring that in over here for you to see. And I'm now logged in and you can see down in the left hand corner, it's telling me I'm logged in as player one with Sorryman. So this is the player's view. There's my shop over here. It's called rations at the moment because that's what I used to initially set it up. Um, and if the DM actually unpaused the game, Thank you very much, DM. He's an idiot. Um, then Sorryman can move around and interact with that shop if he wants to. So let's just move this over here so we can see what we're doing. Sorryman can double click on this. And the first thing that happens is, oh, hang on a minute. The shop has been closed. But can you see at the bottom here, it says shopping as Sorryman the Wide. So it's identifying which character is doing that shopping um, and the amount of money they've got. Uh, and I've got a buy and sell tab here as the player. But uh, yeah, can't do anything. The shop's closed. OK, let's open the shop. So as the DM, I'm going to go in here, click this. There we go. Now it says it's open. OK, so we go back in as Sorryman. Whoop. Uh, so as Sorryman, there's his character sheet. We're going to put that to one side. I don't want that. I want his inventory. And we can click on rations here. And there's our shop. And now because the shop's open, it still says at the bottom who is doing the shopping. And here's the items we can buy. Yeah. Oh, look. The rations. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I'm such a muppet. It's automatically calculating, isn't it? What is five copper pieces? Um, you know, if, if you... 
what what a ration's supposed to be. Can I I can double click on it and I can see five silver pieces. Five silver pieces is the same as one electrum, isn't it? Yeah, and five electrum is the same as one gold. That's what it's doing. If you've already written in the comments what an idiot I am because I hadn't figured that out, then um, give, you, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it's already doing for us. Now, interestingly enough, it didn't do it with arrows. Um, it hasn't gone all five copper. That's the same as one's... Um, Yes. Oh, okay. I bet you if that was ten copper, it if that was ten copper, it would update that and say, oh, actually, it's the same as one silver. But electrum's the weird one, isn't it? It's five equals one electrum. Um, so I think that's what it's done there. It's just yeah, a bit bizarre. Oh, dear. So difficult. <laughs> just just trying to use the brain. It's a Friday here where I am recording this at the moment. Fridays are always quite hard. All right, so let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing. The ramble all over the place is terrible. Hope you're keeping up and hope this, you know, you're enjoying my stupidity. Okay, he wants to buy that chess set. Now we're in a Sorryman. Sorryman can just drag this across, can he? Or does he have to double click it? How does... No, he has to go to this buy button on the right. Okay, so other times when we've done it, we've dragged items across. If I do buy button, Sorryman's got 186 gold click buy it's going to confirm how many do you want well there is only one we're test test it says max one here we're test trying to buy more than is available in a minute uh, and it's going to cost one gold are we happy with that buy item buy it mm. okay something went squiffy there again didn't it it has removed this item and has dropped it down to zero items in here. It's not giving it to Sorryman. And it hasn't taken his gold. Something isn't quite working well. Um, hmm. Ooh. What happens if I try and buy this battle axe for 10 gold? Let's try this and see if this works. Okay, so this has come up. Do I want to buy it? Say yes. Okay, that worked. So why did the chess set not work? This worked. He's now got 176 gold. Uh, he now has this battle axe in his inventory. And you may have seen on the right-hand side in the chat, it's popped up and said, Oh, Sorryman the Wide has bought the following items from default item pile. Obviously, we would want to change that shop name. Now, because we've bought that item, this is not for sale anymore because there's none of them. Okay, which is fine. Um, but look at breastplate. So can we buy a breastplate? It has greyed out the price here because it knows at the bottom here, Sorryman only has a 176 gold. He can't afford it, so it's greyed out. Let's try and buy it anyway. You cannot afford this price. Nice. That's what we want to see. Can't buy it. Can't afford it. So even though it's available, we can't afford it at the moment. They're Sorryman's going to have to beg, borrow, and steal off of his companions to get the money together. Let's buy. Uh, let's buy a ration. No, I can buy up to ten rations. What if I want to buy eleven? I want. I want to buy eleven, please. What if I buy seventeen? What if I want to buy nine? Can you see what it's doing? If I try and buy more than is available, it's defaulting to the maximum available. That's exactly what I would want to see here. So buying 10 of them will cost me 5 gold, so one electrum each. If I buy 2 of them, that's going to cost me uh, 1 gold for 2 rations, because they're worth 1 electrum each. If I buy 3 of them, it's going to cost me 2 gold. So essentially, it's, it's doing the calculation uh, correctly here, because it's saying it's going to take 2 gold coins and give me 1 electrum change, because they're 1 electrum each. Okay, so it is automatically... Uh, upgrading the money to the, the the highest coin value it can use which is fine and I think when we looked in settings there was something and I didn't really stop on it I think there was something that said you can change the way that behaves let's buy those rations that worked Sorryman's now got rations it's calculated his money he's now got that electron piece as coinage as um, returns okay brilliant Whew. that's working not sure what happened with the chess set so it's probably me, but there's a couple of little glitches here. 
let's go back to our DM here and have a look um, back at these. Now we can restock these. Oh, probably want to go to populate items to do that. Yeah, look, the window's not opening, is it? It's it's glitchy. I can't open the populated items. And is that because, just check my other window, is Soryman still shopping? Hmm. Oh, what? Is that the problem? No, okay. So, I really like this way of doing shops using item piles. But it's glitchy. It is glitchy right now. Hmm. Okay, let's close that. Let's go back to those. Um, let's look at the configuration settings for item piles and configure that module, what we got in here. Um, things about debugging, preload files, uh, module settings about being able to drop and things style settings or as item price attributes okay so that's a lot of really really default stuff that we're not necessarily interested in it's this configuring pile that I'm interested in but it's putting it behind that window yeah something isn't quite working what I would do want to do I want to find that money setting was it under other settings under merchant about keeping zero quantity, purchase only, uh, da, 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 buy and sell modifiers, merchant columns open, opening times, hide token when closed, uh, infinite currencies. I can't find the thing that I wanted for this. I'm sure I saw something. Configures bar should transfer other currencies and default. Okay. Well, not to worry. It works. Okay. Um, it works as we would like it to, except it's a bit glitchy. So this might be a 3.0 um, little update that needs to happen just to get this. Uh, a bit like with Monk's Enhanced Journal. It, it, it looks great. It looks perfect. It's just not quite doing what we need it to do. Um, I do like the fact it updates this. This is quite nice. So if you leave it so that they can just go and do their own shopping and everything else, it is going to update this and let you know what's been going on. Uh, <laughs> you can just keep an eye on it. It's just such a shame that we're having problems with these. Hmm. Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you think this is good? I like this solution if it worked.